Good morning. Good morning. If I can call, if I can call the meeting to order, please. Uh, thank you. Um, Doug, do we have public speakers today? Uh, yes, sir. We have 10 public speakers. Our first speaker is Bill Henderson, Permanent Citizens Advisory Committee, followed by Haiti De Los Santos and Gene Rushinoff. Mr. Henderson. Good morning. As we've already made clear, the PCAC and its councils can't support the proposed fare increases when the other parties to last year's agreement on the funding the MTA have failed to provide support outlined in the agreement. The riders have already paid for these shortfalls through sizable service cuts. Not only has the state wildly overestimated new revenues enacted for the MTA, Albany is making a regular practice of draining dedicated transportation funds to finance general fund shortfalls. The state has already confiscated $143 million, and now it proposes to take an additional $16.7 million. As a result, we appear headed into a future where riders will bear an increasingly greater share of the MTA's operating costs. Already, the riders' share of total operating costs is programmed to rise from 53.4% in 2010 to 59.9% in 2013. We find this shift unacceptable in light of the substantial benefits that transit provides to, throughout our community. Our position is straightforward. We, we firmly oppose these fair increases and demand that this board and MTA senior management call on the legislature to carry out its responsibilities to this region, whether by enacting congestion pricing, tolling the East River bridges, or finding other appropriate sources to meet the needs of this vital community service. We call on you to reconsider elements of, in the current fair proposal which have little financial benefit but great impact on riders, such as charging riders for a new metro card, reducing or eliminating discounts on joint monthly commuter rail and transit passes, reducing the period that rail fares are valid or may be presented for refund, and imposing a $10 service charge on refunds. We're pleased that you have understood the writer's opposition to caps on unlimited metro cards and challenge you to similarly reconsider these elements. Riders want unlimited metro cards to be truly unlimited and to be able to receive a refund for unused tickets within a reasonable amount of time and without unreasonable fees. These proposals strike at the heart of customer service. What's next, a surcharge for schedule information or directions to an onboard bathroom? Riders aren't happy with increased fares, but these are the kind of proposals that truly feed riders' anger. We urge you to reject them. In summary, the PCAC is categorically opposed to the proposed fare increases and believes that equity must be restored in meeting the challenge of funding the MTA. We are further opposed to, this, to the inequitable, rider-unfriendly changes to fair policy, which con continue to breed customer resentment for no appreciable financial or operational benefit. We ask you to make the right decision today, even if it's difficult. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Heidi De Los Santos, followed by Gene Rushinoff, and then Noah Butnick. Ms. De Los Santos. Uh, two minutes per speaker, please. Raising the fare to everybody is a very unfair thing, but I would like to know for how much are you raising the half fare card for the disabled people? And whatever it is, don't you think that will maybe be too much for some of us because we might not have jobs and if we are looking for them, uh, it is very difficult. And uh, being helped by the government, we are... Um, we only get a certain amount of money every month, and that might be too much for us to, um, what do you say, uh, uh, <laughs> what we have every month and what you are trying to get us to pay. We might not have enough left every month to, uh, uh left for us to uh, balance uh, the month. So uh, can't you either lower that 
or leave our cards alone because some of us cannot handle it and yes a lot of people who don't have jobs cannot handle it and I don't care what you people think about me making a big deal about uh, the buses that you have cut hey come on leave it alone it's already been done certain buses people need leave the B39 alone bring it back it is a bus that we all need especially the disabled but thank you Ms. Yes. Santos. but yes leave the bus I mean uh, do not raise the cards so much Thank you. Our next speaker, Gene Russian off Strap Hangers Campaign, followed by Noah Butnick. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman and MTA board members. I'm Gene Russian off with the Strap Hangers Campaign, a transit riders group. So, how hard are riders being hit by fare hikes and service cuts? The numbers are clear. This will be the third year in a row uh, for fare increases, March 2008, June 2009, and now at the end of 2010. This is unprecedented in the history of the authority in its 106 years. Uh, when the 30-day unlimited rental card was introduced in 1998, it cost 63 bucks. Uh, now it's going up, to, it appears, going up to 104. That's a 65% increase. That's got to be way over the rate of inflation during the last 12 years. And with the fare hike and service cuts in effect, riders will be shouldering 60% of the operating costs of the system for bus subways and buses combined, the highest fare box burden in the nation. Uh, I estimate that riders on the subways alone are paying 80% for the cost of operating that system. And here's what we are getting for paying more. The list reads like the 10 plagues. The W line eliminated, the M train killed in southern Brooklyn, the G line permanently cut in half, 37 bus routes cut, 570 bus stops, longer waits and more crowding for literally millions of bus and subway riders, 173 fewer subway car, track, and escalator cleaners, 105 fewer stations with dedicated announcers, scores of stations without station booth clerks, and only two years of your vital MTA uh, rebuilding program funded. Today is a sad day for the subway and bus system. These cuts and fare hikes are not only caused by the poor economy, they're caused by Albany City Hall and Washington not coming to the rescue. Uh, that's why our folks are here with signs today that say, Riders to Albany, help. Uh, let's hope we've hit bottom and that all three levels of government will come to the rescue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ashinoff. Noah Butnick, Walt Potivin, and then Gabrielle Gemma. Good morning. I'm Noah Budnick from Transportation Alternatives. Transportation Alternatives op opposes the proposed fare hikes. We, like the riders, like all of you, like the transit workers, and like elected officials, want a world-class transit system in New York's metropolitan region. It's the essence of our economy, our mobility, and our way of life. But we're moving in the opposite direction. New York has just fell victim to the worst service cuts in a generation, our fares went up last year. Our fares went up the year before. These cuts and hikes are the result of years of disinvestment by our state and city elected officials. Each of these fare hikes and service cuts falls on the backs of the riders, and this needs to change. It's an election year. Service was cut, and the fare is going up. Well, who's standing up for the riders? Who's standing up for the bus and subway and rail riders? Well, today, Transportation Alternatives is officially launching our Rider Rebellion campaign. We are putting the voice of the public in public transportation and demanding that the state legislature and candidates for governor commit to giving our transit system the funding it needs to provide the very best service for every rider. Our goal is to give the public a voice in Albany and achieve a reliable, clean, safe, and dignified public transit ride. A lot of people who benefit from transit support the MTA, but it's not enough. The MTA's financial problems are very real, and the most conspicuous beneficiaries who are not supporting the transit system are drivers. They benefit from the 8.5 million uh, car trips avoided every day. They benefit from the 8.5 million fewer competitors for parking spaces. And what are drivers paying 
to support the system that provides these benefits to them. Our Rider Rebellion campaign is grounded in the Transit Rider Bill of Rights, and we're here to unveil it today. The Bill of Rights is supported by the Nyberg Strap Hangers Campaign, Transportation Alternatives, the Pratt Center for Community Development, and the Tri-State Transportation Campaign. And we invite everybody here to sign the Bill of Rights as well. All transit riders have a right to equally reliable, affordable, and efficient transit. All transit riders have a right to fare hikes that are only enacted as a last resort. They have a right to a more accessible transit system, helpful, courteous service from MTA employees, and a minimum of one transit worker and one transit rider as voting members of the MTA Board of Directors. Please summarize your comments. We already have 10,000 people signed on to the Transit Rider Bill of Rights. The riders are your truest allies. They're the allies of the MTA Board, they're the allies of the unions, and they should be the allies of our, of our elected officials. So we encourage everybody here to join the Rider Rebellion campaign and endorse the Transit Rider Bill of Rights. We need to make sure that our representatives support transit in Albany, and our goal is to help put public back in public transit. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Walt Pointevian, followed by Gabrielle Gemma, Marty Goodman, and Maurice Jenkins. Hello. Good morning. Uh, good morning, um, board of members. I like to speak as a student. I'm, my name is Walt Pointevian. I go to CSI, High, um, CSI College. Um, I would like to state about how much I pay to pay a day to go to school. I, pay, I spend about $9 a day just to go to and from school. That's 450 on three buses alone. Now, that's altogether, that's $1,500 a year. Now, $1,500 a year, that's my mom's rent alone. If you raise up the fares and if you raise, up, raise it up, how am I going to be able to eat? How am I going to be able to, I'm going to be choosing between school or going to, going to school or eating? You have to really realize that. I would like to say that please don't raise the fares. Not only, not only for me, now for my family, for the people that actually have the same situation as myself. That's all I wanted to say. Keep it brief. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gabrielle Gemma. And then Marty Goodman. Good morning. Uh, Gabrielle Gemma. I'm representing Take Back Our Transit System and the Freedom Party, which is running Charles Barron for governor, the only African-American candidate in the state elections. And many of you have heard me speak before about the fact that this transit system belongs to the people, that it has been leased to the MTA, and that until we have a struggle that's forceful enough to take it back and remove it from their hands, we will never get anything from this board. But I want to focus on, in my remarks today, is to talk about the profound and utter disenfranchisement of the people of the city of New York. If you look at this board, this board is made up of people who are corporate executives, who are Wall Street trucking companies, lawyers from big law firms who neither ride the subways, they live in penthouses and mansions. They make up their minds. We told our people, don't take off from work or school uh, or anything today because it's a waste of time. Walder has already announced they're going ahead with this. But I also want to raise one particular issue. If you look at this board, there is only, I believe, one black member of the board who has a voting say. In a city that is nearly two-thirds African American and Latino, when you put this together with the cuts in our hospitals, closing of North General, the attacks on Harlem Hospital, the closing of our schools, this board for, is, is engaging in the resegregation and the extreme segregation and the extreme deprivation of the working class and particularly the African American and Latino communities of this city. This is not going to be just go on and on. There are portions of the Bronx and Co-op City that, can't, that don't even comments. have public transportation now. This is, this is our transit system, leased to the MTA, just leased, that gives over $2.5 billion this year to the banks in triple tax-free debt payments. Warned, 
times over by the state controller general Kindly that this tax, that remarks. this debt service is going to go up and up and up as, and then the riders are supposed to pay for it. This is a board that has invested three and a half billion dollars in derivatives on, on Wall please. Street. And until we challenge the fact that the MTA is being as used as a cash cow to give to your friends on Wall Street, to your legal Ms. firms, Chairman, all on, eight legal firms that you contract with, all of your MTA executives who line up in the offices working on nothing but bond payments while we suffer on those trains, while transit workers who give their Ms. lives Chairman, we'll are now. laid off to the detriment of the public and to our communities. This will not stand. Our next speaker, the please. utter racism, the utter attack on workers in the city. Our next speaker is Marty Goodman. Marty Goodman followed by Maurice Jenkins. Thank you. Marty Goodman, followed by Maurice Jenkins and Tony Murphy. Marty Goodman, station agent. Uh, I just want people to be clear that these board meetings are held in the morning. Fair hikes votes are held in the morning to prevent the masses from being outside. You guys know already that it would be torches and pitchforks for you guys if the masses were actually able to, to voice their opinion and shut this city down. Never have I seen the anger higher than it is right now at this board of rich people who don't even ride their own transit system. Where are even the politicians? This is a set-up deal by the Democratic Party, obviously. They want to get a vote. Where are they to oppose uh, this fair hike that is so regressive? Where are they calling for taxes on Wall Street, which is where the money off our fair card is going? More and more, most of it in tax-free bonds to rich loafers on Park Avenue. Now, this is going to devastate working people. Now you're going to raise the base fare to 250 that means the bus boys and the waiters and the maids that I service every day are going to get slammed with a fair hike and the on the unlimited cards. Now, I, I want to point out one thing that really has got me mad. The previous uh, head of the MTA was Elliot Sander, who was an international representative of DMJM uh, company which were big promoters of the easy car technology. And now they're going to be implementing it more with special lanes for the easy car. And I wonder what kind of backroom deals are going on. But I know you guys are promoting all the downsizing, all the layoffs, uh, just to keep MTA Inc. going. And that's exactly what it is. The MTA is subsidized more than any other major transit system at the fare box. And it's at the fare box, people, that you are handing over to the banks hundreds of millions, even Please billions a year, in tax-free bonds for people who basically do not work for a living. That's Thank where you, your Goodman. money is going. That is what's hitting your pocketbook. And that's why there are layoffs in the TWU, 900 people. How can you sleep at night uh, voting speakers? for such a thing? How could you sleep? Our next speaker. You have devastated you, Mr. the lives and families of hundreds of people because, by law, you've got to pay Wall Street Mr. Goodman, before you pay the, the workers. Speaker, please. Shame on you, and we will shut you down. One of these days, we will do it the right way. Thank you. Next speaker is Maurice Jenkins, to be followed by Tony Murphy and Augustin Castro. Maurice Jenkins, Tony Murphy, Augustin Castro, and then our last two speakers, Matt Chotkin. Yes, please. Maurice Jenkins is our next speaker. Not here. Then Tony Murphy. Free speech. My name is Tony Murphy. 
I'm also with uh, Take Back Our Transit System. I'd like to call attention to the um, what I think is the hypocritical statements being made by the MTA chairperson, Mr. Walder, who has been in the media saying, well, we went to the, the public hearings and people said they didn't want us to cap the card, so we heard them. We're only going to raise it $15. This is just nonsense. This is the way, this reminds me of the way they used the students last year. The students got a meeting with them, and they said, well, we're going to cut the students. Oh, no, wait, we're going to save the students, but we're going to, now we're going to go up to the transit union. They know what they're going to do ahead of time. This idea that they've listened to the people, that's why we're not going to cap this. That's a product of the $100,000 speechwriter that, that Mr. Walder employed. I th I'm sure we heard that on Channel 11. He pays a speechwriter $100,000 to tell him what to say. And he needs to do that because he only does what the banks tell him to do. He doesn't serve the transit system for us. He doesn't, you, he doesn't employ the transit system for the people who ride it. His heart, his soul is owned by Wall Street, paid, bought and paid for by the $350,000 a year he gets, the $5,000 a month housing allowance. That's why when we say fire the MTA, we say that because the MTA has proven itself incapable of doing anything but serve the banks or the real estate moguls in this city. It's proven itself incapable of running the system for the people, which is what it's supposed to do. It's time to fire the MTA, but we don't just say fire the MTA and that's it. We're also talking about electing a board of riders and transit workers and representatives of the elderly, representatives of the disabled, to be the new Please board conclude, that runs Mr. public Murphy. transportation. The people who run transportation should be the people who use it, should be the people who actually run it, and the people whose lives are affected by it. Thank these you, are the Mr. people Murphy. who are being hurt by these decisions, which really entail giving hundreds of millions of dollars to banks and debt services, has been, has been pointed out, or other ridiculous schemes that we can see how ridiculous they are. The Second Avenue subway is a perfect Moving example. Moving on to the next speaker, please. Excuse me, I would, I would like to have a few more minutes to speak. No, I'm sorry. We have a board then meeting this, to conduct. I, I'm not, I'm not speaker, appealing to this board. I'm appealing to the writers over here. Writers, our next could I have some more time to speak? Our, Your time has lapsed. We're moving on to our next speaker, August, Augustine Castro. It's time for this, for this time of the system not to be run on behalf our of the rich three speakers. bankers and real estate moguls that sit on this board. Our last three speakers, please. It's time please. for this system to be run by the people, and that's why we say fire the MTA. Augustine Castro, yeah. Augustine Castro, Matt Chotkin, and then our last speaker, Mike Eilenfeld. Mr. Castro. The government just spent trillions of our tax dollars to bail out the financial, financial institutions, yet they say that there's no money for essential public services. Transportation is not the only public service that is being cut. It is being cut and attacked along with public education, public libraries, and all other kinds of essential public services. These are the priorities of capitalist society. The MTA is run by the same interest that controls the whole government, a bunch of rich scumbags. We need to take back our transportation system, as well as our public education system, and really the rest of our society. You guys are expecting us to pay more for less. We need to take our societies back from the rich. We need a class war. Good morning. Yes, I'm thank getting you. real tired of talking to this board. I'm getting real tired. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm getting real tired of talking to this board. I'm getting real tired of you. According to the, uh, with the amount of money that MTH CEO and Chairman Jay Walder makes in his salary on a yearly basis, you have to raise the base fare to $2.50, which I don't think is fair for a regular customer who 
has to ride the subways and buses. And uh, you also uh, have to reduce overtime, which makes for a really dirty, filthy subway track and platform on every single subway line. And uh, you just uh, have to just not raise these fares. Although you did one good thing, you did not raise fares for customers who are seniors and people with disabilities like myself who you know have to ride the subways and buses on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Our last speaker today is Mike Eilenfeld. Fire the goddamn MTA. Transit should be free. What, what business do we have appealing to Albany for health? I'm talking to the young people here. If we've learned anything at all, anything at all from the hearings, these scumbags, these chupacabras, they don't listen to us. And as Gabrielle and Tony said and others, they, they're here in the interest of the banks. Now, we know that it ain't just a matter of rhetoric to take back the MTA. We know that we own it. We built it. The working class needs it. It's the lifeblood of the city. The working class is the engine of New York City. We run it. We service it. The TWU is us. We've learned that. Now, the thing is that it isn't going to be easy to take back the MTA. It's going to be a hell of a struggle. And I think that, young folks, you need to think about the struggle that's ahead. Like the young man before me said, we're in a class struggle. They have declared class war against us. They're sticking it to us. Now, let's, I mean, let's understand that. And let's fire the fucking MTA. That concludes today's public speaking session. Doug, thank you. Um, thank you to everyone on the board for attending the special board meeting today and also for your attendance at the nine public hearings that we held last month. Um, today we have in front of us a proposal to increase fares in our transit and commuter rail systems at the end of the year. Um, when we think about this process, I think it's important to recognize that this process was set in motion back in May 2009 when Albany approved the rescue package at that time for the MTA. That package included the payroll mobility tax and other new revenue sources that were intended to generate nearly $2 billion for our transit system. But the final piece of that package was an agreement that the MTA would increase fares and tolls in 2011 and in 2013 and that each of those increases was expected to generate 7.5% in additional revenue. While we all know that the state revenues fell far short of what was originally projected, and through the time frame of our business plan, they will fall short by $2.5 billion, uh, we here at this board and this company have taken extraordinary measures to hold up our end of the deal and stick to a 7.5% revenue increase. Uh, rather than make up the revenue shortfall with a larger increase, we've worked hard to change the way we do business. We've reduced our administrative payroll, literally cutting 20% at headquarters and 15% at all of our other agencies, consolidating business functions, controlling overtime, eliminating 3,500 positions across the company, curtailing programs or projects, and yes, in, in certain instances, limited service uh, to our customers. I would certainly accept that some of these actions were painful for our customers uh, and our employees. I don't think that we can miss that. All told, we are generating recurring savings year after year of $525 million. Um, and in the business plan that you adopted on a preliminary basis last July, uh, this past July, uh, we noted that we expect these savings to grow to three quarters of a billion dollars uh, by 2014. 
Uh, there's a lot more work to be done. This is not finished yet by any means. Um, but this is the most aggressive initiative in the history of the MTA to change the cost structure that we have. And I think it's very clear that the fare increase we're discussing today would be much, much higher if we had not undertaken these actions. Now, we heard in our public speakers and we heard through the, the public comments at the, uh, at the public hearings that we held that there are some who encourage the board to vote against this increase, uh, frankly, on the grounds that the rescue package has fallen apart. Um, and, and indeed, the rescue package, as I said, is not generating the revenues that we had hoped uh, to receive from that. But unfortunately, I don't think that we as a board have that choice. Uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility to ensure that our budget for uh, 2011 is balanced, and it simply won't be if we, uh, if we don't undertake a fair increase uh, or put, approve a fair increase at that, this time. Having said that, um, I think many speakers speak to us about the importance of support from our federal government, from our state government, and from our city government, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, it's important to the MTA. We have to have a continuing dialogue uh, with these partners, and we will continue to need help um, from our governmental partners to support our uh, transit system. Um, I would also make the point that while we have we're not in a position to be able to avoid this increase, I think we did go into the public hearing process uh, with our ears very much open, that we've listened to the comments of hundreds of customers and others about how they use the MTA services and how dependent they are on it. We do provide, I believe, the single most important public service in the metropolitan region. We're literally the foundation upon which this region is built. And I think the speakers at public hearings, the speakers today and the speakers at our meetings continue to underscore how important the transit service uh, is to them. In particular, in the public hearings, an overwhelming majority of transit customers told us that keeping a pass that allowed for unlimited travel was preferred to a pass that would be capped. Um, I think it's clear that in the time, the 15 or so years since the pass was introduced, um, an unlimited ride pass has become a fundamental part of life uh, in New York City for many bus and subway customers, uh, and I would certainly propose that we continue to keep that pass as we go forward. On the commuter rail side, we also made uh, some changes. Uh, this proposal doubles the validity periods for tickets from what was originally proposed. Uh, giving customers more time to be able to utilize their tickets. Um, the public hearing process also provided suggestions for an alternative toll proposal to raise cash tolls by a dollar over and above uh, the increase that had been proposed while holding down um, the Easy Pass proposal. Um, uh, it is an interesting proposal. Uh, I know that there's comments that are coming in on it. Information on this alternative uh, is provided for your consideration. We will not be taking action today on the toll proposal. Uh, that action will be taken uh, on the 27th of October. So the proposal that you have before you today, um, which uh, is specifically on the fare and toll uh, increase, uh, the fare increases uh, to go into effect uh, at the end of the year, uh, the proposal before you today responds to the comments that we heard at the nine public hearings and I think they achieve three goals that we set out. They continue to maintain mobility in the region, they enhance or maintain equity, and they increase the efficiency of selling and collecting our fares. Can I ask for a motion to pass the resolution, please? Do I have a second? second. Discussion? Norman? Mr. Chairman, um, It, 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 for, first, let me say to some of the speakers um, that get up and, and speak, um, we're not blank bags, all right? Mm -hmm. The people that sit on this board are not scumbags. They're not. They're hardworking men and women. Uh, some of them may be more fortunate than others, but at the end of the day, that's that's their life. That's what they chose to do. They chose to become successful. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, me, myself, I'm, I'm a labor leader. I don't uh, have a degree in, in, in law. 
Um, I don't live in a penthouse. Uh, I live in a home, but not a penthouse. And yeah, I, I, I do the best that I can for my family. And you know, for people to get up and insult uh, the men and women on this board, uh, especially the ladies, I, I find it very disrespectful. And there are other ways to uh, get your point across than to um, degrade people. Uh, some people's families, their children are watching this, their parents are watching this. They, they, they certainly didn't raise their children to be that way. That being said, um, I did not attend uh, the public hearings. The reason why I did not attend the public hearings is because I've heard it all before. Uh, I'm on the side of the people. Uh, I will continue to be on the side of the people because I believe that there are other ways to get to where we need to be. Uh, the federal government uh, bailed out Wall Street. Uh, they bailed out General Motors. Uh, but they refused to bail out the people of this city, of this state. The people, the strap hangers, is not the stimulus package for the MTA. They're not the bailout package for the MTA. Um, I believe that uh, New Yorkers are very savvy people. I believe that if you tell them what the number is to maintain the services, keep people employed, upgrade the, the service, that they will pay that number. I believe whatever you tell them and they're getting a service for it, they will pay for that service. I also believe that, uh, like one gentleman said, um, I remember a few months ago, this place was, was filled with elected officials. They were all over the place. They were tripping over each other to get to the microphone. Now that the primaries are over, and everybody knows who the candidates are going to be. They're not even here. And they, the press will run to them later on and say, well, where were you today? And they'll come up with some cockamamie excuse why they couldn't make it today. And they'll leave it to the board to fight and try to make the best of what we have. I believe, and I didn't believe this before, so I, you know, I learned from my mistakes. I believe that congestion pricing might have been the answer to the people of this city. Because when you get into your car, your truck, that's a luxury to drive to and from wherever you want to go. Play your music, smoke your cigarettes, all of that good stuff. I know, Nancy. So cigarettes are good for you, though. They make you strong. <laughs> and I believe that that needs to resurface again because the people of this city don't have jobs. They don't have incomes. They don't have the money. That kid that spoke and said that his mom is going to have to choose between sending him to school and having a hot meal, that's, I, I'm not going to sit here and put that kid in a situation where he has to choose whether or not he has a sandwich or a container of soup at night and whether he goes to school. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So I guess in closing, I will not support a fair hike. Not now. Not ever. When it comes to cutting the services of the people, laying people off, and then asking for more. It's almost like going into a store and saying, I'd like to purchase a gallon of milk. And the man behind the counter says, that's $5 for the gallon of milk. But I'm only going to give you a half a gallon of milk. I'm, gonna go, I'm only going to put it in a half gallon container. But I want you to pay for this gallon of milk. Can't do that one. I think that we need to push the envelope back to the legislators and to Washington. Let the system crash. I know we have a job to do, but let the system crash. I'll bet you dollars to donuts 
they don't let that happen. I bet you they don't let that happen, but as long as we're going to sit here and vote to keep raising the fare on the backs of the people that can't afford it, they sit back in Washington and in Albany and in the council, city council, and say they'll come up with the money. My position, give it to the mayor. Give the MTA to the mayor. This is his city. He knows how to turn businesses around. If this was a, a, a private corporation, we'd have closed up a long time ago. The man knows how to turn a business around. Give it to him. Let him have it. Let him step up to the plate and run the MTA. And I'll bet you we get more than what we have right now. So in any vote that goes down, I respect what you have to do, Mr. Chairman. You've come across the pond and you've, I don't know, you stepped into the ocean. I don't know what happened over here, but it, it is what it is. It's the job, it's the seat that you have. And for the other board members, I'm asking you to back up off of this. I'm asking you to please reconsider this increase. If you can live with yourself, and you can close your eyes at night knowing that you stuck it to all of these people, then it's a good look. You do what you got to do. But at the end of the day, remember, you meet the same people on the way up as you can meet on the way down. And it's not a good look. So I will be voting no on whatever those proposals are. Thank you, sir. Andrew? I'm, I'm not going to be as eloquent as my fellow commissioner, that's for sure. It's tough following you, Commissioner Seabrook. Uh, that uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, or some of that milk you were talking about. Um, ordinarily, and in the past, uh, the Transit Riders Council and, and, our, uh, and our other councils have supported uh, fare hikes. We believe they are necessary. Um, we still believe they're necessary, but we just can't support this one. And the reason for that is this one gives riders no hope that things are going to get better for them. This one comes on the heels, as you've heard, of the largest service decreases in 35 years. Higher fares and less service is a lose-lose for riders. Um, in fact, there's already been a fare increase for some riders uh, where there have been certain bus cuts uh, where you used to be able to take two buses and you now have to take three buses, the third bus is a fare hike because there's no three-legged transfer for those. So some folks have already received a fare hike. The much vaunted van service that's supposed to substitute for these buses is a fare hike because there's no transfer between a van and the rest of the transit system. So those folks have received a fare hike. Everybody remembers all the politicians coming here and saying, ask us for money, ask us for money. I could name them, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to put anyone on the spot. So we asked. The result is the really, really loathed payroll mobility tax. And not only is it loathed, it's not producing what it was purported to produce. It's, it's better than nothing, but a much better idea would have been uh, congestion pricing, tolls on the free bridges, a small gas tax. That would have been predictable. The payroll mobility tax is, not, is something that nobody likes and is not producing what it was supposed to, producing, to produce. Now, riders did pony up to the table on this, on this deal for uh, periodic fare hikes. We got the service cuts, and we got last year's fare increase. Uh, but now riders are being asked to pick up an inordinate amount of the slack, an inordinate amount of the slack. That's not to say we don't need the money. Of course we need the money. But how could this happen in a state with the lion's share of transit riders in the country and a great deal of wealth in the state of New York? How is it that states like Illinois, California, Massachusetts, and Florida are caring more about their passengers than we are? It's, it's an abomination. Um, this fare plan actually hits our best customers, buyers of the monthly MetroCard, with the heftiest fare hike, a 17% fare hike. We should be rewarding our best customers. We should have tinkered with the base fare or the, or the fare that hits the occasional rider. Our best customers should be rewarded for being our best customers. Instead, they're being penalized for being our best customers. Um, I applaud Chairman Walder for the, uh, for the uh, cuts to dupli duplicative, uh, 
departments and, and, and waste and, and all of the things he's doing. My hat's off to him. It's, it's a tough job. Uh, nobody has done that in a very long time, and it needs to be done. And we're, when we put our house in order, I, I think maybe we'll get more support. And the fact is we are putting our house in order, and we ought to be getting that support. And it's, it's not existent from Albany, as far as I can see. Um, I'm also really, really con confounded by the fact that we may be approving, when it comes to October 27th, no toll hike for Easy Pass customers, just cash customers. To me, that's encouraging people to drive. Uh, imagine transit users getting a fare hike, but drivers getting no hike. To me, that's just that's just crazy. It's it's the it's the opposite of going green. I don't know what it'll do to TBTA support for mass transit, which is a wonderful thing and which we love hearing the figures every month. Um, I'm, I'm just, I, I hope that, that we don't come to that. I, I agree with Borough President Molinaro of Staten Island. There ought to be a large differential between the cash and the easy pass customer. I think everybody's on board with that. But to give drivers no hike when we're, when we're hitting our, 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 you know, our generally much less uh, uh, fortunate uh, transit users, to me, seems just backwards. So uh, I don't have a vote, obviously. Um, I understand how everybody is around this table. I understand you have to do what you have to do. But as Norman says, at the end of the day, um, I just can't support, I can't support this the way it is. Thank you. Pat? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, thanks. Uh, I, I want to begin by echoing uh, Norman's comment about the unfortunate and regrettable lack of civility of some of the comments. I think they were, they were uncalled for. Uh, on the merits, I, I too am going to vote against the, uh, the fare increases, uh, which I note follow a series of fare increases and service cutbacks. Uh, let me explain briefly. Over a period of 15 years, Albany has turned its back on and reneged on its support of mass transit. Lately, uh, last several years, funds have been diverted from the MTA to the New York State General Fund. And part of the reason for the fiscal crisis that the MTA faces today is actions taken in Albany over that 15-year period. There seems to be a lack of recognition in Albany that not only is the MTA a critically important transportation agency, but it's also an economic development agency for both New York City, the downstate region, and the entire state. I think it's important to note, however, that the blame is not solely Albany's that to some extent the MTA's issues as reported in the popular press over the last 10 to 20 years, as reported in reports by various controllers, have made it easier for the political class in Albany to underfund mass transit and, frankly, have undermined the public's trust in the MTA. That's been regrettable. I note the proposal to defund Long Island bus uh, uh, set forth in the proposed budget. Uh, discussions are continuing, and Nassau County, together with the MTA, will work hard to try to negotiate a deal. I, I also want to note briefly the, the following three realities. One is that the MTA fiscal crisis is real and dire, and there is a real need for funds. Second, I note the long-term desirability of fare increases ultimately tied to CPI. Lastly, I recognize steps taken by our chairman and CEO over the last year to make the MTA more efficient reducing management core, taking steps to control overtime, the health care RFP that this board voted on several days ago, uh, and the procurement reform. Uh, I'm sure there's more to come and more for this board to be to consider. But in light of the uh, failure by Albany over the last 15 years to support mass transit, I'll be voting against the fare increases on the subway, bus, including Long Island Bus, Long Island Railroad, and Metro North. Thank you. Alan? <clears throat> um, again, I thank uh, Brother uh, Seabrook for uh, his, his comments and his uh, defense of the motivations of the individuals who sit and put in so much time on this board. Uh, uh, I witnessed uh, uh, the long and hard hours that all of you do for no compensation. Uh, whatsoever, not a dollar uh, a year, uh, volunteering your time, each of you from different regions of, uh, of the state, uh, because you believe in public transit. And uh, I, I've witnessed that firsthand now that I've been on here for two years and have spent many, many hours uh, with you. And uh, I know how much time I put in, and I'm probably not even in the top 50% uh, 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 of it. So I, I, I uh, 
and so while I may disagree with you from time to time, uh, uh, I certainly have my respect for you has all grown. Uh, this is not the toughest vote that I've had to take uh, since I've been on this board. Uh, quite frankly, uh, that was uh, some months ago when uh, I voted with uh, Brother Seabrook against the service cuts that uh, this board enacted. Vote with me again? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not, not today, Norman. Not today. Uh, I was out on the street with the uh, strap hangers uh, prior to that, working uh, the, my first year uh, on the board, working with uh, transit advocates, going to Albany, uh, attempting to lobby the, the legislature, trying to come up with a rational plan to deal with the severe problems that this agency had been dealt as a result of the real estate economy. Uh, I also uh, recognizing uh, and what many people have said here at this hearing today and at other hearings, uh, the structural problems uh, that we have. Uh, uh, when we talk about you know, uh, uh, our obligation to the banks, uh, that's a real obligation. Uh, it's uh, one that was not created by uh, anybody in this room, uh, but is in fact a real obligation that costs us a billion and a half dollars per year, uh, created largely in the 1990s. Uh, that uh, is something that needs to be dealt with by uh, 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 the government of this state. Uh, it is uh, an amount that's going to continue to grow and it's going to continue to choke us, and uh, uh, we need to deal with that. Uh, as I said, that the, uh, the toughest vote that I had to take this year uh, was on the service cut, uh, cut vote, and I voted uh, against the service cut, uh, cuts with uh, uh, Norman Seabrook uh, because I felt that uh, that was the thing that really hurt the people the most in this city. And, uh, uh, and I never want to be in a position to have to make service cuts again. Uh, in fact, I'm hoping that we get to the day where revenues increase and I'll be the first one standing up pushing to restore many of the services that we in fact cut. Uh, I know that those of you who disagreed with me on that vote did so because they believed that uh, uh, it was absolutely necessary to do at that time. Um, and now we're faced uh, with the, uh, uh, the, the unfortunate timing problem of having to institute a previously agreed upon uh, revenue vote, which was applauded by the transit advocates, and uh, when the bailout discussion took place uh, uh, back in uh, May of 2009, uh, everybody thought that this was a great idea, that the 7 percent increase was going to take place in 2011 and 2013 in the mobility tax, and we were going to be able to restore services. Uh, and maintain services, and there would be an agreed upon. You know, so this was all talked about. It was applauded. It was editorialized and supported, and uh, and everybody was happy. And now it's a little uh, confusing to me to be criticized or to have the board criticized for doing that which was done in plain view as part of a plan to rescue the system uh, uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, the dilemma that I have is that the, the cuts did take place, and uh, and we've now moved on, and we have this huge financial hole. Uh, the money that we saved from making those cuts was approximately a hundred million dollars. Uh, the size of the hole that these increases that we're talking about today would be four times that amount. Okay, if we don't increase revenue, and I'm not optimistic that, you know, and we certainly are not legally allowed to, in my judgment, wait for Albany or, or Washington to, to come forward and give us money. If we don't have the money to pay, we are looking at cuts of a gargantuan nature here. Uh, $400 million is four times the service cuts that already took place. And we cut services beyond uh, uh, the fat to, uh, to the muscle and to the bone of uh, our operation. It's just not something to me, you know, to me 
that I that I could sleep at night uh, doing. And I don't like to have to increase costs. I know that time, times are difficult for people. I'm not a wealthy person. I'm just a, a working class guy. I buy a monthly Metro card uh, uh, every month. Uh, so I understand uh, the, the costs for, for, uh, uh, for people, and I know that it's going to uh, create enormous hardships on people. But quite frankly, I don't see any choice. I know that we've cut in the neighborhoods of a half a billion dollars in operating costs. That Jay and his team are doing a terrific job shaking this place upside down. I know that we're going to keep going in that direction, and we're going to have to keep going in that direction even to make this plan work. Okay, there are going to have to be more cuts that we're going to have to do non-services in order to be able to to get in, you know, and hold this thing at seven and a half percent, which, quite frankly, I think is a miracle. Uh, that we're even talking about this, given the budget numbers that I look at each and every month, uh, sitting on the finance committee and the and the the, uh, uh, the revenues that uh, uh, that that continue to dwindle on each of the subsidies that we get. And yes, the rider groups and the the public uh, should be unhappy. Our customers pay the highest percentage of uh, costs of the system than anywhere in the country, and it's wrong. Okay, that's an Albany problem. Okay, uh, the, uh, the the rescue plan that was supposed to uh, allow us not to cut services, okay, should have been funded properly. It wasn't. That's an Albany problem. Uh, you know, they shouldn't have stole $143 million in December from us and another $16 million last month. Uh, that's for $160 million. That's Albany, okay? I understand the frustration. Quite frankly, the people in this room are an easy target uh, for the frustration. And, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, that's why they pay us the big bucks, so to speak. Uh, but uh, uh, it's our responsibility to deal with reality. And the reality is that we have to meet our debt obligations by law. Uh, if we don't have this $400 million, we're not going to be able to continue to operate the level of services that we have uh, today. And uh, I am not cutting services, and I'm not voting for cutting services any greater than we have right now. Uh, you know, the next service uh, issue I vote on is going to be to increase services and to put bus lines and subway lines back up, and I'm hoping that the economy upticks or that Albany comes through uh, and rescues, uh, rescues uh, the riders, or well, Washington comes through, and I'll be the first one to stand up and say, this money's coming in, let's put this line up, let's put that line up, and, and put it to a vote. So uh, uh, I uh, am uh, uh, voting to support uh, uh, unhappily, but uh, it's part of the job, uh, the, uh, the package that's on the table. Thank you. Oh, are we going to deal with the toll in issue separately? We'll deal with the toll issue separately. Okay. Yes. Um, Ira? Um, very briefly, I just want to echo um, Andrew's statements and, of course, Norman and, and Pat, especially regarding um, the public and, and how they have addressed us. I think that there's a be there is a better way, Norman, and the way is to actually address the issues rather than attack personally. I don't... I think it takes away also from the true, the real problems that this agency is facing and the state is facing and who's responsible for them. I mean, I don't think the board should be treated as, as scapegoats, and I think that's, our, that's become the position of the board. And moving on, uh, regarding the fare increase specifically, um, this, you know, it, we, we say we need a 7.5% yield, yet I know commuters see this and they say, well, my fare is going up 9%. I think that, now I, I understand why, and I try to explain how we're doing our fare increase, but I think that hits people, and they say, well, the MTA is lying, and that hurts as a board member. Say Andrew mentioned the 17% increase on the, on the monthly, on the Metro card monthly, and I think that's what, that's what people see, that's what they're impacted with, so they say we're not telling the truth. I think we do have a credibility problem, and, I, and to your credit, um, Jay, you've, you've done a lot to, to improve the credibility of MTA, in order to make cuts, to make administrative cuts, to say that we're as you say, making every dollar count. I compliment you on that because every month is something that shows 
we're, we're increasing our savings. We're, we're doing our part. The MTA is doing its part. And I compliment you on that. But I still think we at the railroad have a, we at the MTA have a credibility problem because the deal was broken. And not only did politicians come here and say, ask us for money, but afterwards, in December, we were cut. Now, okay, it's been a while now. We're coming up on another year. I can move on. But my fear here is that we move on, next year's a new year, and what is the state going to do next year when it doesn't have money? What about the MMTOA funds? What are they going to do? Are they going to let us have, they going to say, well, the MTA looks like they're doing all right. Maybe we'll, we'll cut another $100 million, and let's see what they do. This is after, Jay, you've made all these administrative cuts, done as much as you can, and are there two sets of books? There isn't. So what are we going to do? The, the, are there going to be any more cuts we can make so the legislature can take our MMTOA money away? That's why, we, that's why in some ways, this, fa this, this fare increase is wrong. And the other, is that we're going to be faced with another cycle. And that's my fear. And that what are we going to do then? Cut more service? To conclude, I think that <clears throat> if we could, we should force the issue. I agree with Norman. I understand where everyone's coming from here. There's a fiduciary responsibility. There are bonds to pay, which were the commitments were made years before now. This is a long-term, long-term issue. The debt has been building up for years. Fifteen years ago, people said there's going to be a debt bomb that's going to blow up. Well, it's blown up in our faces. The legislature has has cut us cut us loose, so to speak. We're on our own. So, but I I think you have to be opposed from a rider perspective. We are, we are opposed to fare increases because there were service cuts. Because people on the Port Washington branch got their service cut by 50%. And they, they pay the, one of the highest proportions. Almost like, almost, almost like a transit system there as far as fare box ratio. In conclusion, I'd just like to say the PCAC gathered together. That's all three. That's Transit, Metro North, and Long Island Railroad. And it was nearly a unanimous vote to oppose the fare increase. That, that, I, don't think, I don't know if that's ever happened. I don't know. Andrew's been on the council much longer than I have. But I think usually there's always some people that say, well, you know, it's a promised fare increase. It's fine. You know, it's, it, it, was, it was part of a deal. We go along. But after the service cuts, I think the riders have pretty much had it. And they blame us. And I think there's some, and I'm happy Transportation Alternatives and Gene Rushinoff are looking to, you know, promote the, the belief that it's not, it's not us. We're doing everything we can. And other, pe other people, have to we, need, we need a decent, an acceptable subsidy to run this system. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew? Um, <coughs> I'd just like to <coughs> first to um, address Pat's comments. Um, coming from a suburban county, also Westchester, and having been at the Nassau County Fair hearing, increase hearings that night, something's going to have to be done about Long Island bus. <coughs> There's a tremendous amount of people, not only in the city, but in the suburban counties that just plain need their mass transit and can't afford it. And I don't know how it's going to be done. It's a really big problem, but we're going to have to work out what happens to the suburban bus lines. And uh, to me, in the end, we're going to need a regional transport plan that, that includes Nassau, Suffolk, Westchester, of course, and Dutchess in the northern counties. This is going to have to be looked at because these people cannot be left without a mode of transportation. Today there's about a third of the counties, even in the suburban areas where the people are classified as uh, as in the poverty state. And it's not only a city thing today. It's all over our, our metropolitan area. and We're going to have to deal with the suburban buses. But it's not fair. The problem we have is that Nassau does get an additional $30 million subsidy from the MTA and Westchester and <coughs> Suffolk and the other suburban counties and the city do not get that benefit on their private bus line. So this is going to have to be addressed, and I understand where Pat's coming from, but it's not fair to impinge upon the MTA because everybody's paying to subsidize Nassau bus now, which is going to have to be looked at. On the broader picture of the MTA, a tremendous amount of work has been done here. I think Jay and this board and, of course, the senior staff have really doubled the efforts to make sure every nickel counts here. And it's easy to talk about, but this has been a heck of a year at the MTA. And I hope the public realizes that, that this is just willy-nilly. We're not just sitting here raising this fare on people that plain can't afford it. We understand that. But as everybody said, you have a fiduciary responsibility to run this system. 
and a tremendous amount of expenses have been cut here. It's just unbelievable. After being here for a long time, one of the senior board members, we have cut more and done more here, not just to the people that are running the system, but administratively and all the support services that has been done collectively in the 15 years I've been here. And I know in talking to Jay and the board what our plans are for the future, and we're not going to let up on this expense control. But the real facts are that nobody wants to talk about or admit to, even with all these massive tax increases, the mobility tax, which was still a billion and a half dollars last year, all these other taxes we get, we still come up short. Why? It's really simple. If you take a look at the real records, our labor costs, which is the vast majority of the expenses at this place, probably 70 or 80 percent, are up 30 percent over the last five years. And there's no way that you can sustain this place with 30 percent increase in wage costs over five years. I'm sorry. And we are faced with union contracts now that are truly onerous. We have antiquated work rules, which makes it hard for us to modernize the system. We have uh, pension costs and benefits that are just really going out of control here and are unsustainable. It will lead us into bankruptcy. We have outrageous overtime that everybody's worked with in these contracts that is going to have to be addressed because there's no way you can keep the fares down and give the public what they want with these kind of costs. The other thing is what 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 private company do you have around the city and the state where workers don't contribute a substantial amount to their health care costs? Well, that's what we're faced with here, and we all know what's happened to health care costs. This is a structural change. It's going to have to be changed. Taking a look at the capital plan, which to me is something that I am really concerned about, and somebody else mentioned, I think the Riders, Ridership Council mentioned, we have a ticking time bomb here. We have these huge mega, mega projects that are going out of control and are completely strangling our ability to keep our system in a state of good repair. We are going to have to address these things. Plus the fact that debt costs, we all know what a big percentage that's becoming of our, our budget here, and this is increasing every single year as we keep selling more and more debt to finance these big projects, which frankly were not the board's choosing, which were sent upon us by Albany and the politicians. This board never put these big mega projects in, into play. It was done by Albany. So to sum it up, I think the business plan of the MTA today is a ticking time bomb. There is no way that we are going to be able to fulfill what our mission is the way we are going. And there's going to have to be really major structural changes here. Otherwise, this fair hike of 7%, which nobody sitting around here wants to vote for, is just the beginning. Believe me, just the beginning. And I think we really have to, and the politicians, we're having an election in November, come back here in January, the politicians in Albany and this board are going to realistically have to take a look at the way this place does business. Thank you. Speak, Jim. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I, I hesitate to uh, take uh, a lot of time uh, to uh, reiterate items that have been raised before, but I do want to express, first of all, thanks uh, to you and your team uh, for taking a hard look at the, um, at the cost structure here at the MTA and uh, basically chipping in what uh, we can uh, in order to uh, try to close this yawning funding gap. Uh, and uh, as has been stated, this is not something that we can close the books on. There are plenty to do. Uh, and uh, your uh, 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 open-eyed uh, approach to uh, managing those problems uh, is uh, very much appreciated. That being said, I, uh, I want to ally myself uh, and uh, that of our council uh, with uh, uh, others on this board, uh, Norman, uh, Pat, and my, my fellow uh, PCAC uh, representatives uh, on the side of the riders uh, in uh, saying that it is time to draw the line, that uh, we need to send a message to those entities who have abdicated their responsibility. Uh, and uh, while we can... <coughs> get ourselves uh, into a, an elaborate 
construct of why we need to step up to the plate and uh, lay this on the back of the riders. Uh, the riders have paid and paid, and uh, it is time to say enough and send the message back to the people and the institutions uh, who's, who are abdicating their own responsibilities in this matter. And uh, I think that, uh, it, and I say this uh, with, with uh, some passion, that um, uh, board members, uh, my fellow board members, uh, uh, should uh, listen carefully to what has been said, not just by the uh, non-voting rider members, but uh, our fellow voting members and uh, um, ally yourselves uh, with that sentiment and uh, let's just get, it, get on with it. Thank you. Do I have anyone else? Mitch? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to repeat anything that I've heard. Um, this is, I've been here many years and I voted against fair increases and voted for fair increases based upon the circumstances at the time. But um, today we're faced with a very, very difficult decision. Um, in some ways, the hardest vote today is yes. That is a much harder vote to make than no today because of the concerns and the activities and the testimony and the hearings and the discussions and the abdication and everything, it is much more difficult for a board member, in my opinion, sitting around this table to vote yes than to vote no. Uh, because yes, in my opinion, um, is the only difference between what I see as a fair increase based upon an agreement which was made and, on the other hand, substantial additional service cutbacks, which I believe are worse than raising the fare, the 7.5% net revenue. That's how I look at the vote today that we are placed with. Uh, Albany and Washington and our local governments um, have known for the last nine months that this day would come, that sometime in October of 2010 a vote would have to be taken to do something to the fares if no other action has been taken. And while we have all told Washington we would appreciate your assistance, no aid has been forthcoming. And as we've all told Albany on many occasions, we'd greatly appreciate your assistance, no aid has been forthcoming. And as we've told all local governments, no aid has been forthcoming. So therefore, the MTA is left to its own devices. And we only have three devices. Number one is to reduce our expenses, and the chairman is doing that with this board to over $500 million in 2011, and I agree with Chairman Saul. I'm sure those numbers will continue uh, to be extended. Second is service cutbacks, which we went through in a very painful way a number of months ago, and in reality is directly related to at that time was the $143 million Albany stole from us, today meaning $160 million <coughs> Albany stole from us. I hate to see what the number might be tomorrow, um, the, way these are go the way things are going in that regard. But if you look at it, that is almost dollar for dollar the service cutbacks. We could have avoided all the service cutbacks if Albany had given us the money they were legally obligated to give us. And then the Port Washington line would have half-hour service, and all of Andrew's lines would have the services they provide, and all the bus lines that we heard hearings on over and over again about this line and that line. We could have avoided all of that, and yet we were forced to go through that agony, and it is agony, because of actions of other people not fulfilling their legal obligations. And we can sit here and not fulfill our legal obligations and say, okay, because they didn't do it, we're not going to do it either, but I don't think two wrongs make a right. We are required to do certain things. I would love to be able to reduce the debt service. <coughs> I don't like to pay debt service. I'd much rather use it to paint the stations or put the 
uh, people back. But until I get a letter from either the controller of the state of New York or the controller of the city of New York telling us we don't have to pay the debt service, we have to pay the debt service. If one of those two gentlemen would like to send us that letter, I'd be more than happy not to pay the debt service because paying the debt service is not my idea of how we should spend money in this, in this place. So in, in my opinion at the moment, this vote today comes down to further service cutbacks, which I think would be worse than raising the fares at the levels we all agreed would be done in May of 2009. And remember, the fare increase doesn't go into effect tomorrow. It doesn't go into effect for another two and a half months. So Washington, we're ready for you. Albany, we're ready for you. Come and help us. Help us avert these fare increases that all we're doing today is starting the process to start. If you want to help us, we're more than happy to accept the funds to avert this and avert the service cutbacks that will go with this. This is one of the most difficult things that I will have to do, but I think from the perspective of what we've tried to do and the way we've laid it out, um, while I would love to vote no, and I think that's the easy vote, in my opinion, the harder vote is yes, and that's how I will vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I just please? It, the, it, it's not an easy vote to vote no. It's, 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 I mean, you could frame it that way, but it's, it's you know, and, and as an attorney, you, you did pretty good in framing it that way. <laughs> but at the end of the day, People ran around the country and, 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 and had elections and, and started screaming, fired up, fired up. People are now fed up. They're fed up with every time you turn around. It's the middle class. It's the working poor. It's the people that can't afford it that's getting smacked around every single turn we take. You said something that reminded me of my mother. And you said, well, true story. I hope that's you, good. Well, listen, let, 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 me, let, me tell you what she, let me tell you what she would say to me. She used to tell me, Norman, I told you. Norman, I told you. Norman, I told you. And you said you told Albany we needed money. You told New York we needed money. And she used to say something to me, but now I know exactly what it means. She said, I am going to show you better than I can tell you. So we need to push the envelope and say to those individuals... That continue to say, oh, don't worry about it. The MTA, they're going to vote for the fair hike. We're off the hook again. We have to stop taking these people off the hook and make them responsible for the positions that they chose to take office for. We have to say no to the fair hike, and I'm asking you to support us on this. And if you say we have two and a half months more, then let's vote no today and push the envelope and see whether or not they come to our rescue. And since we have two and a half months, let's take a look at this two and a half months from now. Um, yeah. Susan? I think they're both right. I don't think it matters whether you vote yes or no. It's a terrible vote to take, and it's emotionally difficult on all of us because no matter which way any of us votes, our hearts and our minds are in different places. And it's very difficult to not vote with your heart just as it's very difficult not to vote with your mind. The hearings and the people that spoke today made it so clear that people can't afford a fair increase. People also can't afford an increase in taxes. It's, it can't happen. However, cutting service has been a nightmare for many, many people. This region can least afford our system going down in flames. We have to have transit service. Even for two months, not having tra transit service would be a disaster for us. Norman says draw the line. Well, there are three things that we can do. We can cut service, which we've done, and it's been horrible for all of us. We can look internally for cost savings, which we have been doing and we are doing and we will continue to do. And lastly, we can raise fares. That's all we've got in our whole arsenal. 
I think we are in a much better position to say to Albany, we did everything we could do. There's nothing left for us to do than we are to draw the line before we live out an agreement that we made. I guess what I'm saying is I would rather have expensive fares than no service. I think that's just a much worse thing to do. I also want to say that I appreciate how much work the staff put in to try to define what was the least detrimental to those people who were the least capable of paying. And I, I do appreciate maintaining the base fare at two and a quarter with the pay per ride metro card. I, I think that's good for lots of people. I also appreciate that the, the change was made to allow a longer time to get a, ref, a refund on your commuter ticket. I think that's very important because it's not always easy for commuters who spend a lot of time on that train to take the time to get a refund. Nonetheless, as much as I would like to say, yes, Norman, let's ask Albany. Well, we are going to ask Albany. We've been asking Albany. And all we got is empty promises, and they treat us like a cash cow. I think we have to be able to say we are doing everything we can do, and to me, this is it. So I will vote yes. Mark? <clears throat> I'll try to be brief. I, um, sort of following Mitch and Susan, I think that at the end of the day, <coughs> the MTA <coughs> sorry, and this board are responsible for providing the vital service of mass transit in this region. And you can't do it without money to pay for it. Um, we have a requirement for a uh, balanced budget. Um, what does that mean, actually? It, what it means is you have to plan ahead so that you actually will have the resources necessary to pay the ongoing source of the service that you're responsible uh, to provide. And at the end of the day, the only piece of the resource side that we control is the fare. If you don't raise the fare, you don't have the money. You have to plan. The only other way to deal that we can control is to spend less. And we've already done that to a degree which um, I agree with various speakers has been extremely difficult and uh, whatever. I mean, cutting service is clearly not a, a desirable place to go. You end up with a balance. Either you raise the fare or you cut service a whole lot more. And we're responsible for carrying out a plan that will work. And I think that the... Uh, seven and a half percent revenue increase uh, represents a um, the best compromise that a lot of thought and work by MTA uh, management and this board is able to come up with at this time in the circumstances that we're in. Um. Sure. Yeah, sure, Jeff. Uh, I, I, I will also certainly be brief. I think uh, there's two points I want to make. Uh, they're sort of related. Uh, the, the first one is we talk about our legal responsibility, of fiduciary duty. Um, I look at it much simpler, is if, in fact, we don't pass a budget and if, in fact, we don't have the revenue, the trains won't run. Um, that's a simple fact. The trains have to run. Come. Well, that, that's, that's my second point. Uh, while I certainly respect and agree with everyone on this board, that we should do whatever we can to have Albany act. We proposed over 20% fare increases. We went to Albany. We talked about East River bridge tolls. We talked about congestion pricing. We proposed we're going to vote on another 7.5% fare increase. We've cut service. I'll do anything it takes, but I'll tell you, I will not vote to shut down the system. It happened for three days, and it pe put people's lives at risk. It put the city's economy at risk. That's something I won't do. 
So if there's some other idea, I'm open to it. If it means going to Albany every day, we did that. I won't vote to shut down the system. And that's where I think we have our legal duty, our fiduciary duty. We need to have the money to run the system because we talk about the unfortunate layoffs we had to do. We talk about uh, the service cuts. Shutting down the system blows all that away. And that's not something I'm not willing to do. Is there anybody who has not spoken uh, who would like to speak? Doreen? Um, being on this board really made me stop believing in fairy tales. I don't think for a minute that Albany is going to do anything for us. In fact, I think they're going to take more. And as much as I'd love to, to engage in an act of civil disobedience and just push this right back at them, I think that's the wrong thing to do. Because if we don't raise fares, as everyone's correctly pointed out, we're going to have to cut service. And I do not want to see another one of our represented workers thrown out of, out of a job. We have a terrific workforce. They get people safely to and from their jobs every night. I don't want to see that jeopardized by further cuts to maintenance, further cuts to service. It's absolutely the wrong thing to do. So while I hate taking this vote, I think at this, at this point in time it's our only option. And I hope that when we have new leadership in Albany early in the new year, maybe we could start talking about things like more of the gas tax going south rather than north. Maybe we should talk about a, a stock transfer tax to start um, redressing some of the iniquities in, in the system that favor the, the wealthy in this state. I think these are all things that could be on the table, but right now, We've got a massive $400 million hole to close, and this is the only way to do it. Okay. Um, I, I don't want to go around the table again. Uh, I think we have everyone who has ha wanted to speak has had an opportunity to speak at least once. Um, I'd like to call this to a vote now if I can. We have a, a motion and a second. Uh, in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, the vote has carried. Um, I, I know that this has been a terribly difficult vote. I don't want to rehash anything that has been said. Um, I do want to thank uh, the members of the board for the consideration that you've given to this. I think that the difficulties that you've expressed, um, I think, is a reflection of the seriousness of the issues and the way in which we've tried to do it. And I also, again, want to underscore to the to the management team. It's not me. It's the management team that has really worked uh, to change the way that we do business. Um, I've been here just a year. Um, they seized the opportunity. They rose to the occasion. Um, they continue day in and day out to bring things to the table that exceed any ideas that I had of being able to do this. And I think we should, in the midst of this, we always need to make sure that we recognize the men and women across our organization uh, who are making these changes happen. Uh, they're the ones doing it on a day-to-day on a, on a -to -day basis. Finally, in terms of making changes happen, uh, a, a last word on implementation. We will implement uh, the increases as discussed uh, at the end of the year. The implementation date, I expect, will be the 30th of December. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'd be happy to take uh, questions if you have any. Well, I think the board said several things. I think the board said that they recognized the effort that we were making as a company to be able to reduce our costs, more than $500 million on a recurring basis. But I think they also said, um, and I would certainly agree, that we can't do it alone, that our public transit system relies on support um, from our federal, state, and, and local governments. Um, and in this regard, uh, we have been let down. Uh, we have seen funds cut from the MTA this year uh, at a time when we had no choice but to make it up by cutting service and, and raising fares. Uh, there is a continuous dialogue uh, with our elected officials, um, with the Department of Transportation in Washington, with people in Albany, 
uh, to try to gain the support that I think our transit system needs, um, and I believe that we do need to be a strong voice to do that. Um, that doesn't take away from the fact that, that the fare increase that we undertook today was, in fact, the fare increase that was planned and scheduled uh, back in May 2009. Um, let me put it to you this way. The fare increase raises $425 million next year. Uh, we have heard an outcry from people about uh, service changes that we put in place earlier this year. Um, those service changes uh, generate about $100 million. So you would be looking at impacts on the service side that are four times uh, the, what we did earlier this year. There is simply no way to be able to make up for the monies that are being raised here today. With the fare hikes, how do MTA, say, bus and subway fares compare with other large systems in Philadelphia, in Chicago, in Washington, in the Bay Area of San Francisco? Uh, it's, it's a bit of a complicated question. I mean, you see, it depends a little bit on the trip that you take. It depends on the products you use. Um, when you go to a place like Washington or the Bay Area, you have distance-based fares that are there. You can have a much higher fare um, in those places than we have. Uh, I grew up in the Rockaways, as many of you know. You ride from the Rockaways into Manhattan, you've had a heck of a ride uh, for, for, for $2.25. That ride would be, would be a heck of a lot more expensive if you were in uh, Washington or, or in uh, San Francisco or other cities that have, uh, that have distance based fares. Push off, push off about tolls until the end of the month. And you know, someone had raised the point about you know, the idea of, of raising transit fares but not tolls and for drivers. So, how, how, what are your thoughts about uh, as, that come, as that vote comes up? Well, I think there's an interesting question that's been put on the table. The MTA had put out a fair proposal um, that would have uh, increased uh, – a toll proposal that would have increased tolls essentially across the board for, for cash users and, and easy pass users. I think through the public hearing process, an alternative idea came out that said, why not increase the, the toll for more on the cash users and, and hold down the tolls for the easy pass? There's an argument for that. Uh, clearly, there's an argument in terms of the fact that – um, it moves people, potentially moves people, hopefully moves people to more efficient products So the way that we want to be able to do things, allows people to move through toll plazas without creating the environmental damage that comes from people staying at a toll plaza. At the same time, I think some people have expressed a view um, that for, for a large portion of the people who drive in the metropolitan area that that would not involve an increase for them at a time when we clearly are raising uh, fares. Um, I think the, uh, it's, an interesting, uh, it's an interesting point that's been made. Uh, we will be considering it. The, the, uh, we put out some further information today and some of the materials that, that we put out. Um, we'll, we'll have a decision toward the end of the month. Uh, there was some discussion here about Long Island Bus and its future. Obviously, Pat Foy had, has a, a problem with the MTA's plan to withdraw its funding. Uh, there's some other sentiments about what's going to happen to Long Island Bus. Can you kind of talk about uh, the MTA's plans and where things are at the moment? Sure. I think we need to be clear about one thing. The MTA hasn't withdrawn its funding. It's Long Island, Nassau County, that has withdrawn its funding for Long Island Boss. Over the past 10 years, Nassau County has withdrawn $140 million from Long Island Boss um, in, in a way that has meant that the MTA has had to put money in to support the bus system in Nassau County differently than it does for any other suburban region uh, in the area. That is, all of the riders have been paying to be able to support uh, the bus system in Nassau County. Given the financial situations that we have, and we have just listened for the last two hours to thoughts about the service cuts that we've had to implement, the thoughts about the impact of fare increases that are here, given the financial system, that, that situation we have, the dire financial situation we have, and the strong steps the MTA has taken, uh, earlier this year we told the Nassau County executive that we could no longer continue to support the bus system and allow them to break their legal obligation to be able to support it under the agreement that had been signed by the MTA in Nassau County. Um, and so we notified them of that earlier in the year. The board adopted a financial plan that recognized that we want those bus services to continue, but Nassau County needs to provide the funding, much as Suffolk County, Westchester County, Putnam County, Dutchess County, Orange County, and Rockland County provide the funding for their suburban bus systems. Those projects. 
Would you support a scaling down of the, of the capital program given the serious pressure on the operating budget? I think the best answer for us right now would be to find a way to be able to ensure that we have the appropriate state support to be able to complete those projects and, and make those holes in the ground operational transit systems. That's what I'd really like to see. I think what you are hearing from people, and I understand it, is the fact that we have a large gap in our capital program right now. We need to fill that gap. We're, we're struggling with a financial circumstance, and I think it is, it is an issue that we will be dealing with going forward. But my goal, my hope, um, is we have started to do these projects for the first time in a generation. Um, I hope we'll have the, the financial support from the federal government and from the state government uh, to continue the projects, to get them completed, and to show the type of transit improvements that were intended to the hundreds of thousands of people who could benefit from them every single day. See any sunlight on the horizon in terms of sales tax revenue, mortgage recording tax money? Uh, we have, you, you see a little bit of ups and downs, but, but really you're, you're seeing a situation that's not changing very much right now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful and optimistic, but unfortunately you can't balance the MTA's bo budget on, on hope and, uh, and optimism. Hey, do you, what assurances do you give to the riders out there about any further, about, about guarding against any further service cuts or fare increases, noting the MTA's financial situation. The MTA board considered a preliminary financial plan this past July um, that had the following characteristics. Um, it did not contain any further service cuts. It contained a fare increase in 2013, consistent again with the package that had been developed uh, with Albany. It did also call on our organization to be able to make further reductions in our cost structure. Um, and we sought to be able to increase the amount of savings that we're seeing on an annual basis um, from the $500 million a year that we're saving right now off the actions we've taken to three quarters of a billion dollars by 2014. As part of that, it has also called for a greater partnership with our labor unions and has sought to increase our, to, 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 uh, to decrease, that, to hold our labor costs over that period of time. So there's a lot of work to be done. Is it a plan that is achievable? Yes. It's a plan that's achievable. Um, is it done yet? No, it's not done yet. We have a lot of work to do. So there is a possibility perhaps of further service cuts? Or no, I, I think the board has adopted a very clear direction in what it is seeking to do, and we're now working to be able to do that. Pete, do you have a question? I'm sorry. Yes, I mean, did you agree with the uh, assessment by uh, Vice Chairman Saul? I mean, he described the NTA, is, even with these fare hikes and the changes that have happens to date 500 million as a ticking time bomb. You're talking about the, the pension costs, the, the bond costs, et cetera. Well, I think, I think the, uh, that Commissioner Saul has been very clear in making the point that some of the underlying costs for the MTA are growing at, at uh, percentages that far exceed the rates of inflation and far exceed the, the increases that we're talking about today. When we look at health care costs, when we look at pension costs, when we look at some of the general wage increases uh, that we've offered, they far exceed uh, the level of inflation that, that's there. Um, I think he is underscoring the point that, that I've been trying to make, that we need to change and, and come to grips with the cost structure of the MTA, turn over every leaf to be able to drive costs out of our company, and as we did in our financial plan, show uh, how we will work with our labor unions to be able to improve productivity um, and to be able to hold down the future increases in many of these costs. I think that is the only way that we will be in a long-term sustainable plan, but that is the plan that the MTA has put out. My view is our goal now is to work to be able to do that, to work with Albany to continue the support for the MTA that we need uh, to be there, both for our operating expenses and, let me say, as importantly or more importantly for our capital expenses, because this company cannot succeed unless we continue to invest in the assets of our company, uh, many of which were built over 100 years ago. date moved up to December 30th? Um, if you look at the calendar, you'll see that, that Christmas is one weekend and, and the next weekend is New Year's, and we were trying to do it outside of the two holiday periods, so we just moved it into a, a place with leave. Traffic is, ridership is down between Christmas and New Year's, so it's a good time to try and get it done. Michael? Um, the uh, Easy Pass proposal, um, where more frequent, more affluent drivers uh, 
have um, have less of an increase uh, seems to run counter to the philosophy behind the um, subway proposal, subway fare proposal, where more frequent, more affluent users have a higher fare increase. Um, I'm just I wanted to ask you about that discrepancy. Well, and again, I, I don't think that we've taken any decision yet on it, and I think you know one of the points that, that is, needs to be taken in the context. At the same time, I would say um, that, that even the, that the, the average incomes and the median incomes <coughs> excuse me, for drivers in general are significantly higher than the average or median incomes that you would see for, for subway users. So we're not necessarily talking about the same population. that you have is a, is a disincentive for the legislature uh, to come to your aid. In other words, every time you have a, a fare hike and dip into the stream, stream of revenue, they say, okay, go ahead, uh, let's let the uh, MTA take it on the chin. Do you feel that way? Do you think that uh, the raising, I mean, I know you may not have a choice to do this, but do you think that it has that impact on the legislature? Well, I think today we carried forth something that was agreed. Um, I think the, the reality is that we are going to rely on support from, from Albany uh, for our transit system. I think the voices of people to tell our, our elected officials how important the transit system to them are critically important, as well as my voice and other voices um, at the MTA. These are exceptionally difficult times uh, financially in the state. We all know that. Um, difficult choices are going to be made going forward, no matter who wins the gubernatorial election uh, going forward. And I think one of the points that comes out of this, and I think is underscored by comments made at our board, was that we do need to be a, a loud voice in the importance of our transit system to the New York metropolitan region and to the economy uh, of the state of New York needs to be underscored at every opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.